call this meeting of the Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on this ninth day of November 2021. I'm going to ask uh, Mike Tishner to come up to the microphone and lead us in a prayer and a place and flag. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today, Lord, just to be thankful, Lord, for this day that you've given us, Lord, the grace, the love, and the mercy, Lord, that you've showed us, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, tonight that, Lord, we always do that with each other, Lord. Show your grace and your love and your mercy, Lord. We ask you to bless this meeting. Lord, we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we've got a little bit of change of pace today and off of the agenda just a little bit. But we're going to start down with Sam Small. And what we're going to do is name off all the folks that got the small business grants from the county. And uh, if you read, you read it off, if you're here, signify that you are and start forward. Because if you're not, we'll just go on over it and go to the next one. And uh, uh, I may need some help at the end of it because uh, some of these guys think they get to keep the checks that nobody's here to pick up. So we may have some help getting you need help getting them back. But anyway, start with you, Sam. Magnolia Creek Children's Boutique. Subway. T&D Rentals. Hartford Recycling. Cafe at the Dam. Country Greenhouse. Countryside Family Care, Southern Auto Sales. Hey, I know I've got one, so. <laughs> All right, mine. The Planet Seed. I'm not dressed for this occasion, I didn't put my school clothes on. <coughs> Voyage Technology, Massage by Bree, Kentucky Pie Shop, Halls Auto Service, Drifters, I know, I'll tell you what, I've got 200, I've got 200. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Bluegrass Family Dentistry. And that's, i got 200. That there. All right, Joe. Yeah. That's it. Golden Nails. <laughs> Copa Cafe. TKM Enterprises. Simmons and Marquita Tishner. That's it. Okay. Otto LMX LLC. Antique Auto Parts Sales. The Pizza Place. I was hoping they would be here and bring something with them. <laughs> Slick Back Barbecue LLC. Them as well. They'll do, yeah. Yeah, them <laughs> too. Do I need a King Incorporated? 
Well, I'm not doing very good. No picture for you. The, I got to feel this one just might be here. The Trophy House of Ohio County. Hey. Dang, you got your picture made. But anyway, let's get what I get. <laughs> I need to cover. No. <laughs> It's good to put some faces with these. Uh -huh. It's good to put faces with some of these places. Okay. I'm sorry. Street Glow Car Wash. Okay. There you're at. Here we go. Bluegrass Tax Services here in Hartford. Barb's Cakes and Catering, Beaver Dam. Bagley's Construction. Is ain't looking good yet. Kid Care, Child Care and Development, Hartford. RBNS Automotive. Oh, I fake it. Come on. <laughs> Uh, Mother Hen Child Care Services, CV Investment Properties, Beaver Dam, and Doolin's Grocery. You hope you can do better than I can. KKB Property Management, Heaving Hatchets Axe Throwing, Dynamic Tanning. Beaver Dam Barber Company. Sam would be good to figure out what happened. They all happy to do it now. He's still working. <laughs> Whoa! She's, she's family. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what I was kind of wondering there. there. <laughs> Trust me, she is family. She, she, she looks better than you do, you know, like it. Sunset Rentals. J.R. Williams TV and Appliance. Emory Car Patrick Center. Small town blooms. Oh, oh. <laughs> I guess that, that was that one. It's almost. I thought that was it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We give you back. Yeah. Send them back to the judge, the judge. and I'll mail them. All right. Are we going to go with that one together? Yeah. I'm just glad for them. Hey, Congratulations you. to everybody. Is that one down there? Okay. I'll take care of it. We appreciate your businesses in Ohio County. Yes, we do. Very proud that, that we could do that. Dave, you going to explain what that was? Yeah, because if I didn't know, we, as part of our ARPA money, the federal money we got for the uh, relief from the uh, COVID, we were able to uh, give small uh, businesses a, a small amount of money to relieve some of the problems that they had. They had to fill out a, you know, lost revenue had to fill out a uh, uh, application and justify what that was for, and we're glad to do it. Um, we, we always appreciate our small business, and when we can't help, we will. Uh, gentlemen, before you, you have the October 26, 2021 minutes. Uh, I need a motion. Motion by Sam Small. I'll second. Second by Jason Bullock. Uh, is there any uh, discussion, corrections, or additions? Discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, like sign. Minutes are approved. Uh, next, you have bills, claims, payments, and transfers. And we got a late list. Including a late list. Make a motion to accept. Motion by Jason Bullock. Second by Sam Smock. Yeah. Let me look at this late list real quick, Judge. Okay. Yeah, I should be doing that earlier, too. Under, this is under discussion now. It's pretty long, right? Mm -hmm. We're under discussion.
discussion. And the, the inmates the, for Christian County, is that the per month, $750 per month per inmate? Um, uh, yeah. I mean, each inmate is listed, uh-huh. Each inmate, yes. Is this just overcrowding? Uh, sometimes it is, and sometimes an inmate that we're not equipped to keep. Oh, okay. With, uh, with severe problems. Uh, any more discussion? Yeah, hang on just a second, yeah. Okay, before y'all looking that over, see if you got more discussion. Um, Give a shout out to people that are that are uh, coroner's office as well represented here tonight. I sure hope we don't have to ha have them do any, spe any business here tonight. Uh, our deputy sheriff, uh, Danny Manton's back there. Danny's been every, everything in the county about to think of, and now he's uh, he's right here. Now he's the deputy sheriff right there. It's only the papers. It was on her list already. The that's worse. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell how old he is for, for, obvious, for reasons. 27. I think you start going back down after a certain yeah. point. Yeah. We graduated from school together. I think I'm actually just a couple months older than him. You're 28? Yeah. 78. I'm trying. No, he won't want no. to go on with me, Mr. Mitchell. He's this principal of the school. <laughs> All right. Anybody else got any questions? Being none. Hey, let's roll call the bills and things. Hey, Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. County? Yes. That's approved. Do you have the bid on the tire tire thing? Bring it forward. Bring it down to Larry Morphew to open. He's, he's a, a fire guy right now. Setting them or putting them out? Well, we found out it's more efficient if you do both. <laughs> it's from Beaver Dam Building Construction. Repair, damage block, wood, top band on roof, replace damaged wood on stairwell band board, paint the exterior of building including doors, no roof decking will be replaced, total cost $22,420. And that's for the fire tower down there to, at the... Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. fire fire training. Training. Is that the only bid we got? Yeah. And we've talked about it before that we wanted to do it and I believe Larry's idea was to get the bid. We'd had we had a quote at that time. But oh, I'll make a motion. Motion by Joe Barnes to accept the second. Second, second by Larry Morphew. Is there any further discussion? Further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign? Motion carried. <laughs> uh, David, are you going to administer this and, and contact them and everything and get them to come do it? I can't, maybe. Please do. We're uh, treasure financial statement. Yes, I was going to tell him that we at the last meeting decided that we've got a board together, and Joe Barnes is on it along with all the firefighters association to uh, review any things from fire departments that come to the court. They go through that committee. Hey, Judge, we're on here is uh, are we voting for the uh, ambulance or the EMS stuff tonight? We already did, I believe. Last meeting. Last meeting. Okay. Yeah, no, the, well, well, there, there'll be a resolution, but I don't have it. Well, At some point, there'll be a resolution, but it's already, uh, we voted to do it. All right. Well, I wanted to, the reason I was asking, I thought it was on here too, but uh, they want to add 15000 to that for a stretcher yeah. to add to that amount. Uh, Is that stretcher? Is that expensive? Jimmy sent it to his head. Our cot, our cot is because it's electric. It's off battery. Fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. And they were asking if they could uh, add that to it for. Well, it'll need to go back to the ARPA committee to do that. I wasn't thinking real fast earlier when it froze with that. It'll need to go back to the ARPA committee. I didn't realize there was nothing. 
And I will be darn sure that we've got the resolution here to make a court meeting. Right, Miranda? You mean the following one after that? In, in December. The, first court the December, December meeting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the next meeting is not a meeting, really. Okay. The next time we talk, it's just going to be Bill paying. That's really hot. We'll go back to the ARPA committee, then back to the court, back to this court, we'll and right. form a resolution. Uh, you have the treasurer's statement for October 2021. Motion by Larry Count to acknowledge that receipt. Second by Larry Morphew. Uh, is there any discussion? Big nine, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion to pass. Uh, Ann, I yes. thought you'd left. There you are. You help us remember to make sure we get that resolution on the on the ambulance thing for the next meeting. I will. The December meeting, I mean. Um, what are, what are we doing now on the uh, utility thing, uh, Miranda? Uh, we just need it passed for to authorize to go ahead and do our agreement with Ottoman. I make a motion to motion by Jason Bullock. The C the B B mm -hmm. Second. Second by Larry Camp. Any discussion? When will those funds be released? Do we know yet? Or? They've already sent us the first 50000 Yeah. And I've actually got to go back to my office and get it out of the account tonight. Well, now, when that happens, how will my, like, in, for the job I work at, I, how, how would they contact? Who, who they would go to the Audubon area. Audubon that area. is now located in so the apartment complex sure. across from Young. Yes. 211 Rochester Road, Beaver Dam, Maya Manor. Okay. We, uh, okay. Uh, did we vote on that? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carried. Uh, we're going to skip. The best didn't get a clerk's report over here, so we're not going to do it tonight. Uh, Justin, you're up. Uh, yes, I'd like the court to entertain a motion to accept and for the judge to sign the opioid abatement allocation agreement uh, with the Kentucky local government entities. Uh, I discussed with you guys uh, a little bit about um, uh, this re results as a, as a result of the opioid litigation. Uh, this is still a moving target, so even though we're signing an agreement, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get anything yet because this is subject to a number of other governmental entities, uh, cities and counties within Kentucky to sign and approve, but I'd ask for our court to go ahead and take that measure now. So um, you move on the motion? If we want. Motion so Okay. I have a motion in two places. So I'll take the, I'll take yours as a second, Larry. Motion to Sam Small, second to Larry Morphy. Any further discussion? In uh, um, first say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Okay. Next, we go into our fun part that we've been looking forward to, the presentation of some of some groups that do a whole lot of good for our county. And we're going to start out with the Jeff Pagan's Boys and Girls Club. Uh, come to the mic if you don't mind and introduce yourselves, even though I know who you are. Okay. Uh, I'm Steve Winkler. I'm over here. We move this up here a little bit. May have let John talk. There we go. Uh, CEO of the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, been with them 22 years, and we uh, operate facilities in South Spencer, Indiana, Owensboro, Henderson, two in Butler County, and we just opened our new club here in Ohio County in August. Uh, John is our chairman. Uh, been a very big force of the operations and funding here at the club. I just want to give you a couple things. We want to ask you for consideration of some art funding and just kind of let you know what we do here at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, it's open to all youth here at the in, in the community from 6 to 18 years of age. Uh, we charge $12 a year uh, to be a member of the club. And right now we're just an extension where it's, it's just an after school program. So if kids cannot pay that $12, we have a scholarship program as well. We're open from 2.30 to 6.30, where we collaborate with our school systems, with our busing, uh, to make sure kids get there. We're still working on some busing out in the Horse Branch area. There's a lot of kids that want to come to the club, so we're trying to organize that as well. And with those hours, it's a, a tremendous time where kids get into trouble, they're running the streets, uh, there may not be a parent at home, 
and also it provides uh, women in the workforce to have childcare after school so they can go back and, and go back to work. Uh, we concentrate on academic success every day in our clubs, our healthy lifestyles and character and leadership. Uh, what we do is we prov uh, provide a healthy snack every day and sometimes those are things that kids may be hungry right after they get out of school. And also we provide uh, food insecurity. This past year uh, we pr put in about $20,000 in food insecurity that John came over to the club through Boys and Girls Club of America and passed out our groceries during the summer uh, to make sure that our, our kids uh, got food, we had lunch meat, we had milk, we had cereal uh, that we put back in the county during the summertime. We had our first family night. Uh, we average about 40 to 50 kids a day after school. We have about 75 registered right now. Uh, we kind of got started late with the school system on our marketing plan. We had some things to get ready for our school. But we had our first family night. We had over 100, fam 100 kids and parents there where we give them a dinner and we do some kind of arts and crafts project to bring the families together. Uh, we do homework after school, drug and alcohol programming, uh, gym activities. And it's just really a safe place for our kids to come, especially kids that are at risk. And I know we look, we kind of look at what that term at risk means, and that really means that parents could be both working, they could be raised by grandparents, single parents, medicated kids that attend school. So we have the whole gamut. It's not just impoverished kids that attend our club. About 65 or 75 percent of our kids who attend after school are in free and reduced lunch. And, um, and again, it's open countywide. And right now, we're just in the beginning stages of our transportation working with our school system. Our operating budget's about $113,000 a year. And we're having our uh, uh, ribbon cutting with our chamber. We uh, joined our chamber. And we have our ribbon cutting on December 2nd at 5.30 at the club. And we invite you all to be there. So first of all, are there any questions about the club, what we do? All together with all of our clubs, we serve about 4,000 kids throughout our communities uh, every day after school and during the summer. And one thing that we like to do is look at funding possibilities that open up during the summer so kids would have a place to come where they can get a lunch every day, uh, get the academic uh, learning loss that they may have in schools. So we do more just than babysitting. We have a lot of programs where we capture the whole family as a unit from family nights to single kids. Uh, the other thing I'd like to present to you is this is our budget. If you take one and pass it down. Is that the budget? The, all of them or just one? Just the whole I county unit. Yeah. Where does that come from? Uh, I'm going to explain that to you real quick. Some of it's very self-explanatory. Some of it has done with COVID issues. So I kind of wanted to uh, give you a list of how we operate and what the, where the money is coming in and what we spend it on. Okay, I think that may help in understanding how we operate our club as well. Okay, we, uh, we basically have a budget just like this in every club. Uh, there are some things that may be blank simply because we don't have it here in Ohio County, but we may have it in Owensboro and some other areas. But you'll see in the board contributions, it's about $3,000 a year simply coming from our board unrestricted contributions where our board members there are highlighted in yellow that basically we're out in the community looking for individual donors uh, to our club uh, our steak and burger that's where we have our kids and we have a guest speaker to come in this year we had to, uh, and last year and this year we had to not have it which is about eight thousand dollars a year uh, due to COVID restrictions Underneath that is our golf classic. We were unable to have it because of COVID restrictions. Grants and miscellaneous, if you see down in yellow, uh, that's basically a 10,000 contribution from Boys and Girls Club of America to where we're serving after school snacks and family food in case families need some help. Um, and then if you see down investment income, that's what our board has raised that we put into, each, into our club each year. That board has gone to the community and asked for corporate sponsorships and pledges over three to five years. If you flip the page, we have a part-time unit director, 
Uh, we pay her $28,000 a year. That's for a 10 month because we're not open during the summer. And our program age, we have about five or six that work for us and some of them work in the school system. And we spend about 40,000 on those. Um, and then the last page, you'll see computers and internet. Uh, we just purchased 15 Chromebooks today to make sure our kids had uh, Chromebooks after school. And then there's that grant expense that I mentioned on the first page that we expend out from our food service program. So over and all, it's about $113,346 a year that we balance our budget. Uh, again, our board is very strong. They're very committed to what we do throughout the community and they look at the best interest of our kids. If you've been able to drive by, you'll see the marketing signs of people who've helped support the Boys and Girls Club. And uh, then one other thing I'd like to contest too, these are expenditure summary level information for the federal government um, in the category of never, uh, negative economic, economic impacts. At 2.9 is small business economic assistance in general, and 2.10 is aid to nonprofit organizations. If you look at the other category of service to disappropriately impacted communities, we fall on education assistance, aid to high poverty districts, education assistance, and academic services. And we also fall on 3.9 healthy childhood environments. And then the other uh, expenditure categories, administrative, other, and those are just administrative expenses from the federal government. So you'll see we fall in about eight or nine of those categories from art funding. Uh, we'd like for you to consider $100,000 to help support the Boys and Girls Club. We feel like that it's a big, tremendous asset to the community to have an after school program for at least $12 a year. And we provide just services to kids, families, and uh, hopefully that we're able to put people, if they're working, not to have to worry about after school care for their children. Any other questions you guys may have? I know I went through very quick, and I know you have a, want to take things in the meeting and progress. Where, where's your location at? Did you location is uh, the Old Wayland Elementary School, and we're working with the school system uh, as they're building their new alternative school behind the high school, is looking to uh, maybe take that uh, from the school system and make that a permanent boys and girls club and take the whole facility. We'll have to do some to probably demolish a couple of the uh, wings, but we're in negotiations with uh, Seth Southern how we'll proceed after this year as well. Sounds great. Really appreciate it, and uh, I believe our, I believe our action tonight is we're going to hear the presentations, correct, and we're taking them back to our, our for committee. And correct. I'm sure that everybody <coughs> sounds good, but we're going to go through the the. Go through the procedures. Exactly, and, and, and as you should. And we track the funds very, uh, very carefully in all of our units. We have to, either through Boys and Girls Club of America, we do a full fledged audit uh, of all of our clubs each year, and we uh, have to make sure that we get any type of government funding, that we have to track those funds accordingly and make sure that you guys are protected as well. Thank you very much. Okay, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Steve. I just allowed that John was going to get up and start talking any second with you, Dave. I won't bore you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very good, and, and there is absolutely no doubt that you're doing a great uh, thing there, and, and we will be uh, deciding on this uh, probably in uh, the next, first of December, but I think it sounds good. And now we're ready for the food pantry. Spared. I am the director, or my wife and I are the directors of your Ohio County Food Pantry. And what I have to present to you today is for your consideration is for the proposal to purchase a new freezer for our ever-expanding pantry. So for those of you that don't know a whole lot about it, um, I'll just give you a brief rundown. Your pantry has grown to where it serves between five and 600 people every month. Uh, five to 600 families, that is, and that equals about 1,000 people, 1,200 people maybe. Uh, we've seen the rise closer of, to the mic. I'm <clears throat> sorry, I can't hear. Sorry about that. We've seen the rise and fall of numbers with the uh, government assistance checks that have come out and helped the families out. Uh, we've seen those numbers go down, but now that those checks have stopped going out, those numbers are climbing rapidly. We're seeing a lot of newcomers, along with the people who 
fell away at the first of the year when the checks came out. So we run through a lot of food, and uh, thanks in great part to the Lions Club and uh, Paxton and Ball, no longer here, but uh, they helped us with the installation of the freezer we currently have, which is working, but it's becoming problematic, and we're also outgrowing it. So we have been dealing with uh, uh, Kentucky Heartland Feeding America. They deal with close to food banks programs, and we get truckloads and truckloads of food from them. A lot of it we end up needing to freeze. Um, so like I said, we're having a few issues with that. Um, it takes a lot of man hours and a lot of shuffling of boxes and stacking. Uh, so we're kind of, we're getting to a point where it's a little bit unsafe for us. Uh, we rely only on donations. Uh, we trust that uh, God will provide it and he does. So nobody at the pantry takes a paycheck. It's strictly volunteer. And we have some of the best volunteers in the county. I do have uh, some proposals for you to look at. Some of our vendors wouldn't quote the freezer itself without quoting the floor. And the floor is a, a huge expense. It costs as much as the box itself. So two of our suppliers you'll see there are very, very close with their prices. The third is nearly double, just because of the floor. You guys have any questions for me at all? Is this what y'all are asking for? Yes, sir. Not that last quote. Just the, the average of the first two. So are you only asking for the freezer? I thought there was a few. There were several other things. <coughs> several those other things. things. Those things are fluctuating with the market Th right now. 35 yeah. nine mm -hmm. and, and what they're asking for. Yeah. Y'all do a great thing. Of course, you know, we probably here uh, make a run a month, I believe. For yes, call sir. once a month from our road department, which we're really glad to do. And uh, y'all do a great thing. And uh, it's hard for some of us to imagine the need that is there for food in this day and time. So uh, I think y'all do wonderful things. Like I said, we're going to uh, take this back, and uh, I think there's little doubt that we're going to take care of it for you, but we're going to officially take for sure at the next meeting. Absolutely. Uh, the December meeting, we only have one in November, December. Okay. So you just, you just want in the 35,000? Nine hundred. Yes, sir. Right. So one or the other. Okay. okay. I, for one, appreciate what you guys are doing. It's just like the volunteer fire department. So what it says, it's volunteer. Yes, sir. And thank you for that dedication for yes. you and your wife. And we, yes. uh, as a court, I think I can speak for everybody. Yes, sir. We appreciate. It. Yes, sir. We, sir. we cannot do it without the great people of Ohio County. Yeah. And the best people in the world, right here. Yeah. You. I'm pretty sure we're going to take care of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I? Okay. Uh, uh, next, we're going to ask the, the ones that we've already talked about the last meeting, but they're here tonight, is the uh, Father's House for Recovery Street Center and, uh, yeah, Father's House Recovery Center. Hello. <laughs> my name is Jennifer Kishner. It's my husband, Mike Kishner. And uh, I, I had a, to give you guys these. You should have a copy of this in front of you there. But um, first of all, I'd just like to thank the court for yes. the generosity and helping us with this huge, huge undertaking and project that we're about to embark on here. Um, but anyway, as you can see, I tried to kind of cover most of the general things here on this page. Um, but Father's House Recovery Center will be located there in, in Beaver, on uh, 62 in Beaverdam. You guys know the location. Um, we have big, big plans there. And uh, it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of prayer, 
We don't have any other type of funding because it's a private, it's going to be a faith-based addiction recovery center. That being said, it's going to be solely dependent upon, as you can see in the paper there, the rent coming in from the, the guys that are there and donations and fundraisers from the community, things of that nature. Uh, this recovery center will be a long-term recovery center. It'll be an 18-month program that they'll uh, they'll come in either, they'll, they'll be walk-ins, they'll come in for the court, you know, there's different ways that they could enter into this program. Obviously, they'll be interviewed, and uh, they have, there, are, there are criteria, you know, you can't just, uh, you have to keep the entire program as a whole in mind as you're adding people to it, but, but, you know, there's a little bit of a process there. But the hopes here is to offer some hope, you know, to people that are bound by addiction that do want out. And there's so many, and I guess everybody in here can agree that this is a huge problem, not just for our community, but for everywhere around us. Addiction is, is rampant. And, um, and there is, there are, there are those out there that, that want out of this and don't know how. And that's what Father's House is going to be about. It's going to be that, that hand to reach out and, and show them that there's hope and lead them through the process of recovery and uh, show them and teach them, you know, the tools and the things they need to sustain that and to keep that. You know, uh, obviously it's faith-based. I've already told you that. So, you know, our uh, our outlook on this going in from from day one is is uh, you know it's a relationship with God. It's a relationship Jesus with Jesus Christ. That's that that's that's what will set them free from this this bondage. And and unfortunately, that's not something that's real well known nowadays. I guess you guys can probably agree with me there. It's not said out loud very often, is it? We offer all kinds of programs. There's all kinds of things out there that sometimes work, sometimes don't. Listen, guys, with this, this program and with a willing heart, you know, with a willing heart, someone that's, that honestly wants help, Jesus Christ never fails. Never. He has a 100% success rate. So this program is modeled really, really closely after that of Friends of Sinners in Owensboro. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but that we worked with them extremely closely in building the program. Uh, so it'll be operated in the, the, the process of the program, especially in the beginning, because, you know, obviously we're new. Uh, it'll be really, really similar to their program. They've worked with us, you know, throughout this whole process, really. Right now, where we are, we have we've just purchased the building. Um, it has a lot of issues, lots and lots of issues. Uh, Jimmy came out and I gave him a grand tour. Uh, it needs a lot of work. It's been neglected for a long time, and but it's not nothing that's you know not possible to happen. It's just going to take a lot of legwork, a lot of elbow grease, some money, and it can, we're going to make that happen. It's going to take a little time. We just had the power turned on actually last week. They just got all that squared away, and we're waiting on estimates and plumbers and electricians and all the things that come along with that to get this up so that we can start you know getting things together for a program. There's a uh, where the, the bunks are in the process of being made. Everything's kind of in motion. It's just, you know, it takes time. But um, I want to just, I just kind of wanted to get, I'd give you this so that you would have a little bit of a rundown there because I know I couldn't cover everything tonight. And there's so many avenues and there's so many, I guess, fingers that's going to come out of Father's House Recovery. It's not only about uh, restoring and offering hope to addicts, but, we, you know, in time we want to be able to offer uh, programs and things for their families, for the children, for everyone that's involved in this because you know if you've had any experience at all in this uh, area it's not just that one person it's a whole family right. and, and, and you know we need, we need to, we, they need a place to come to, to receive help with these things that, that happens that you go through in that. Uh, most of the time, most of the time when somebody that's never experienced this they don't know how to they don't know what to expect. You know, you take a mother that, uh, a young mother that's just been married and they got a couple of kids and then they're, or just say a father. He's got a couple of kids and then one of them ends up in addiction. Well, usually it ends up separating the home. Well, then one of them, the one that uh, the drugs or alcohol affects, they find herself in a rehab. Well, then you got a mom or a dad, whichever one it is, trying to take care of these kids and they're thinking to themselves, what did I do wrong? Or mom or dad, you know, what did I do wrong? Uh, you know, and they're sitting there thinking this stuff, but we want to be able to offer them hope too. We want to be able to offer them to be able to sit down, maybe in a class or in a room with somebody else that's already been through this and been successful through this, 
and show that, hey, there is vic there's victory in this. We can come out of this thing the other side. Maybe we're scarred from it, but we can come out of this thing in victory. You know, uh, offer them hope. You know, just like Jennifer said, that addiction don't just affect one family, one person in that family. It affects the whole family. It don't just affect that household. It affects a mom and a dad. It affects a grandmother, a grandfather, an aunt or an uncle because it separates, because because it gets to where it start, you're starting to disagree on what the whole is. And it starts to separate the whole family. I can remember when I was a kid growing up, uh, there wasn't a weekend one that we didn't get together with most of our family. But addiction wasn't involved in it. You know, uh, hey, probably, probably, we met at my aunt and uncle's house, there was probably 10 people that would meet there in the mornings to go fishing and hunt, or hunting or something. Now, addiction and separation is so, so real anymore that even families or self don't even spend the Thanksgiving or, or Christmas or anything together no more because addiction is a separator. It ain't just in Ohio County. We've had the opportunity to preach and teach in Davis County for the last four or five years. Uh, Lighthouse, uh, Bowlware. We've got to talk to some of these men, you know, and, and most of the time whenever I ask them, whenever I, I'm, I'm ministering and I ask them, I said, how many of you guys are fathers? I'm going to say 99% the hands goes up. So there's a kid, or there's a wife, or there's, there's, there's kids involved in this thing. And I know, because I was never an alcoholic or a drug addict, but I've probably done it all at one point in my life, other than the math or something like that. But I know what changed my life. It wasn't a... It wasn't a uh, uh, a sinner or nothing, but it was Jesus Christ. And that's what we want to offer. We want to offer hope. The hope that works. The hope that changed my life, that taught me how to love my wife, and it taught me how to love my kids and love my grandkids and, and, and to have integrity. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is step out on faith and believe it's in, in this program. And it's, it's starting out as a men's program, but that's not where it's going to stop. Because we want to go ahead after we get this going, we want we, we have visions for a women's facility. That's going to take a lot more uh, because whenever you talk about a women's facility, you're talking about kids involved too. We don't know how we're going to do it yet, but we didn't know how we were going to do this when we first started. All we know is God wanted us to do it. We were going to step out on faith. Joe knows me. Uh, if God puts it on our heart, and I, I, won't, I won't lie to any of you, Man, I, I've tried to, I've, tried, I've, I've said, God, why in the world would you pick us to do this? Well, you know what? Because he thought we could do it. Because he knows we can do it. And uh, in this building, we've walked away from this building twice. Ran. Yeah, because it is so bad. I'm telling you, it's so bad. But you know, the more we kept looking into it, looking into it, and we'd have people, some of our, our, our family at our church and stuff would come in and look at it and say, you know, we can do this. We can do this. Y'all can do this. So, you know, we ended up purchasing the building. So, so, guys, this is going to work. And we want to thank you all for helping us and whatever anybody else could do to help us. But, but this thing's going to work. I believe it. Uh, one of the things that, a couple of things that I really uh, like about it is having to work. I think that's so yeah, important. Absolutely. You got a job absolutely. And you got paying your own way. And the chores and everything you got mentioned doing you, there. You, and uh, even though government, we're not a uh, religious organization. Right. But every success story that I've heard of people that beat this addiction and they stayed, they stayed with it. And That's they, right. They're long enough past that we can say, yes, you did beat it. And right. Believe exactly. It. Every one of them, you know who they thank for it. That's right. That's right. Every one of them I know has been successful. That's thanks. Right. That's right, Jerry. Thanks a higher That's power right. for it. That's right. That's right. You know, you said that, uh, and I even got, and our, we got an awesome county. We really do. We, you know, I, when we first started this, I went and talked to some of the, uh, some of the businesses in the county, and they were all on board. Youngs told us when we got ready that just come back and talk to them, that they would, they would work with us on it. Every one of them I've talked to said that they were on board with us, helping us with it. So, so you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, when we first started this, 
everybody that we talked to was real negative about this. This ain't going to work in Ohio County. It definitely ain't going to work in Beaver Dam. Listen, when we went to the zoning committee, zoning board of Beaver Dam, and it was 100% success. I mean, you know, everyone on the board voted for this thing 100% for that building there in that community. So, you know, this, there's without a doubt in my mind, this thing, it was meant to be and it will work. And, 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 and that's the thing of it, just like me, you know, I've got to work to make a living. I feel good when I do it. You know, they need that responsibility. They need the responsibility of taking care of themselves and supplying their, you know, their, meeting their needs. That's going to be one of the requirements. But not only that, they're going to have to, have to represent the, the place that they come from. You know, as I, like I talked to Young's manufacturer, you know, they're going, to, they're going to drug test, but we're going to drug test. You know, and uh, we want them to represent the, the house as well as, as you know, where they're working at. And, and you know, we want to we want to keep a good name. We want we want men to come out of there. We want them to come out of there, truly, truly healed from this thing. You know. And I'm just going to be honest with you. When you're set free from something, you're set free from it. You're no more addicted to it. You know. Freedom from something means to be separated from that. Your, the bonds are broken from you. Listen, we can have, and, and we've talked to a lot of rehab places, you know, these 30-day rehabs and stuff. They're good. But most of them end up back, guys. Most of them end up back. We've talked to them. And they say probably 80% will come back. That's not what we're wanting to do. That's not what we're going to do. That's not what this thing's about. This thing is about offering help and everything they need to build a new life for them guys and their family. Yeah, I mean, I'm passionate it. about it. She's passionate about it. Yeah. Our church is passionate about yeah. it. I appreciate it. You know, uh, I, this court is too that we've stepped out and Absolutely. started the uh, reentry program. Absolutely. And uh, uh, so, yeah. like I said, we do appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, on the uh, committee reports, the road department met a while ago, and uh, Larry, you want to uh, give that report? Road department met, road department committee met. You mean what we met earlier? Yes. Oh, yes. well, we, were, we had discussed buying a uh, long, long deck, I guess, tractor, <laughs> and uh, we've been renting it. And uh, Joe's going to entertain a motion that we have passed for bid uh, for that uh, for a machine of that size. And uh, Joe, if you want to take it from there, why? Yeah, we're going to. We just need to advertise for bid. Uh, we can pick up the specs from Nick on the uh, on specifications of the machine, but for a long reach excavator, uh, we need to take some bid prices and see that we're being competitive on prices. So, uh, just wanted to entertain a motion to advertise for bids on the long reach. A motion by second. Joe Barnes and second by Larry Morphew to uh, advertise for bids on a long reach excavator. Uh, the specs will be uh, picked up at the uh, road department and Miranda would you uh, see that uh, you work with Nick on getting that, make sure it run in. Oh, I can't time for paper twice. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carried. Any other committees have, have met and want to make a report? I'm uh, I'm on this committee here, so. Please. The, the Bill Monroe Bluegrass. Yes, yes, sir. Let's I don't know if we just, because since we just got it, do we want to send it home with them and then yes. let them oversee it and then maybe vote on it the next? Yes. We'll tell it's us just the it. contract for the uh, foundation to uh, oversee the property. We, we've done this before. It's just the found, it's the contract is, uh, it's, it's up and there's a, a little bit of lingo change, like they changed the name where the, it used to say the Jerusalem Ridge Bluegrass Music Foundation. Now it's the Bill Monroe Bluegrass Music Foundation of Kentucky. You'll see everything changed in red, but. I guess this was contract from 2011 here. In 
Yes. Yeah. So to, to ten years is up. It's time to to redo it. Yeah. Was, that, was that the only change made in? Well, there's, no. There's some things there, stricken. There's very little added. Oh, okay. Yeah. The name change in there a little bit. Very little added, but you'll see it in red. Like looks like most of it's on uh, nine through uh, fourteen. Yeah. And all the blue is stuff that we strike and out. Strike that. They totally yeah. don't they need strike out of it. Okay. okay. And we'll we'll have hopefully bring it back for hopefully motion. Any of you have any questions about it, you can call uh, Kenny Alfred has worked on it, and uh, Jason. And, and, uh, Jason so, that, not a lot of huge changes to it at all. But. No, mostly things that we don't need any more striking from stripping from it. Okay. So could I just ask one, Jason, what the uh, what the reason for the name change, if I may be inquisitive? Well, at the time when we had, we were the we were we could didn't have the naming rights. We didn't we couldn't we couldn't be called the Bill Monroe Bluegrass Music Foundation. We won that right to have that name. So now that's why it's changed. Okay. It was it's formerly that in changed. the beginning it's that changed. changed the it's been, yeah, but we in the contract right. right. Yeah. Now it's gone back. Okay. It's been changed for a while, but the contract just still said Jerusalem Ridge, so we're just changing it. To yeah. Appreciate your information. Any other committee reports? If not, we go to magistrate's uh, comments and requests. Uh, start with you, Sam. I don't have anything right now, Jason. No, not nothing there. Joe. No, thank you, Joe. Larry. No, Larry. I talked to Jason about it. Chris Smith with Scotty's and they're going to try to finish up either this week or next week on our uh, black coffee. Okay. I seen them come off the, look like they came from the parkway. And they the same thing the about a grinding there. job out there on Sherwood. Well, they, they came just into said the they just, so. he just, Judge, he just said they're going to try to get finished in the next week. Okay. Uh, I guess that's included in right. Okay. He's going to Halls Creek, or Old Halls Creek. Okay. Next. Okay. Justin, you have anything else? No, thank you, Judge. Uh, has anybody got anything else for the good of the body? Uh, yes. Uh, I did invite the Division of Water to be here tonight, and I see no one from them. I did ask them to come. They're not here. Uh, the Division of Highways did come back, and they, the reason they didn't come is because they looked at it and there's absolutely nothing that the Department of Highways can be. It's strictly the Division of Water. That's who will keep, kind of keep pumping. And I will sign a formal letter for them to be here at the next meeting, which is December the 14th. And I'll send a formal letter for some to be here then. We're doing it good, though. That's what the board I don't know. We're going to keep trying. Okay. We we understand you and feel what you're going through. And uh, if we don't forget and keep talking about it, well, Maybe we'll get somebody to listen to you. You might want to remind people too that are listening that we are only having a bills and claims right. Zoom. We're not having another regular meeting this month. We are going to pay our bills by Zoom call meeting the 30th of the month. But we'll be back here in a regular meter meeting on December the uh, 14th. 14th. And at that time, we'll make a formal resolution on this request that was presented tonight. Jeff. Yes. What'd you say? Happy Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, yes, 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 yes. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. <laughs> and happy hey, and happy Veterans Day before that. Uh, in case you want to do business in here, uh, uh, the uh, Fiscal court offices are all closed uh, on, late, uh, on uh, Veterans Day, and uh, we're proud of that. So, uh, all of you, and uh, if nothing else for the good of the body, I'm going to say this meeting is adjourned.